changed horizontally. Okay, it changed horizontally. There's no vertical change like the last one. The last one, it got taller. Um, it seemed to still have the same pattern, it just got taller. This one still hits the same maximum and minimum, but it hits it in different places. And instead of going through two cycles between zero and four pi, it's only completed one cycle. It's only completed one cycle between zero and four pi. So now our period for this function is four pi. Now, where did that come from? It came from dividing this x by 2. It turns out if you got your equation to figure out the new period, the new period equals the standard period, 2 pi, divided by, we call it the coefficient b, Okay, this is the coefficient b, the number in front of the x squared. <clears throat> so the number in front of x squared here is 1 half. 2 pi divided by 1 half is 4 pi. But you can see it here on the graph. All you have to do is compare the original sine of x to sine of x over 2, and you can see that we only complete one cycle between 0 and 4 pi to the new period here. Is four pi. Okay, let's So the number in the front, we actually call this the coefficient a. Okay, it comes first. This is a, and it stands for amplitude. This is b, and it goes for um, it. It changes the period. Okay, it changes the period. Um, we're going to skip c. They don't ask y'all to learn about the coefficient c in here, but we are going to talk about the last one. It's a coefficient of d. Um, somebody give me a number between negative 3 and 0. Negative 2. Negative 2. All right, negative 2. So here's our new function, the sine of x minus 2. The sine of x minus 2. So let's put that in our calculator. So leave sine of x in number 1. Change y2 to the sine of x. Make sure you close the parentheses after the x. Because the minus 2 is not in the sine function. It's on the end of it. Okay. Um, only if there were parentheses around that, around the x minus 2, include minus 2 inside the parentheses. So make sure you close the parentheses after the x. Sine of x minus 2. Graphic. What happened? There's the original. Here's our transformation. Did anything change horizontally? Horizontally, no. What does it look like happened? Yeah, we just took the entire thing and we moved it down two units. So now instead of our midline, the center of our graph being on the x-axis, it's now shifted if I, let me do this, you don't, well, you don't necessarily have to do this, but let me do this. I'm going to put y equals negative 2 into y3. Okay, does that not cut that one in half? So now instead of it being the x-axis, our midline is uh, negative 2. It took the middle of our function, took the whole function and put it down two units. Okay? So this is what we call a vertical shift. This is coefficient d, and it's a vertical shift. And in this case, down two units. So we're not changing anything. We're not stretching it out. We still um, get a maximum of one and negative one. It's just those are down two units. So now it's going to be between negative three and negative one. Uh, we're not changing it horizontally. We didn't do anything to its period. We just shifted the entire thing down two units. It's still the same height, 
just in your different location. Okay, so those are the three things that you need to be familiar with. You can have any combination of these. Okay, you can have any combination of these <coughs> pieces, but you just have to recognize which one affects what. So, let's do one that has them all. Okay, let's do one that has them all. So, y'all help me build this. Um, let's see here. Give me a number between 0 and 1, other than 1 half. 0.75, 3 fourths. Okay, let's go with 3 fourths. Sign of, uh, give me a number between uh, 1 and 3. 2. A lot of times they'll put a theta. I've been using x, but sometimes they'll put a theta. So I just want to throw that in there so you're familiar with it. And technically that would make that f of theta, not f of x. <clears throat> Remember, theta is just a variable. Okay, so this is a variable. Uh, give me a number between 0 and 4. 3. All right. So, before we touch our calculator, let's talk about what's happening here. Okay? A is our amplitude. Okay, that's our amplitude. So, we have an amplitude of 3 fourths. So, this one's actually going to be a little bit shorter than the standard sine of x function because we instead of going all the way up to one well we're going up to three fourths so our amplitude is three fourths here's our b okay here's our b so what did we do with that two pi divided by b so what's our new period two pi divided by b two pi divided by two gives us Okay, so it's going to be squished. One cycle is going to be done in pi units instead of two pi units. And then our vertical shift, this time we go up three. So technically, I don't really have to touch my calculator to do this, but let's, let's confirm what all these changes would look like. Okay, I'm going to leave sine of x in my first one. I'm going to put 3 fourths right here in front of my sine of x. I'm going to put a 2 in front of my x. And then it plus 3 here on the end. And I know I'm shifting it up 3, so just for the sake of visualization, I'm going to put uh, a 3 right here in y3 so that you can see where the midline is. Um, let's check and make sure that our window is big enough. Yeah, I think we're good. Yeah, we should be good. So graph it. Here's the original. And here comes our translation. So amplitude of 3 fourths. So we can tell that it's a little bit shorter. It's not a huge difference uh, because uh, 3 fourths is not that far away from 1. But it is a little bit shorter. Period of pi. Notice we complete one, two, three, four cycles. We complete four cycles between zero and four pi as opposed to just two cycles before because our period is now in terms of pi. So every pi units we complete a cycle. Here's one, here's two, three, here's four. Uh, and then obviously you can see the vertical shift. We've taken it and moved it up three units here. We can look at the table. Y1 is the original. Uh, why did I guess the period? Oh, it's because of the period change. Yeah. Okay. That looks really weird because it gives us all threes, but that's just because of the way that I have my thing set. Um, so it's better to show the stuff. But three very simple things here. You need to be familiar with each of these coefficients, A, B, and D, and they go in alphabetical order. Okay? If anything's in front of the sine function, it's amplitude. A is amplitude. If there's anything with the angle, with the x or the theta, that affects the period. Um, now, notice, let me point this out. Typically, we think when we multiply by a bigger number, 
going to make things bigger, right? We multiply by two, typically when you think that that would make the period longer. Our period got shorter. So four is our first one. We had one half. One half times our variable. Our period got longer. Okay? So when that B, that number with the X, it's the opposite of what we're expecting to happen. Okay, it's the opposite of what we're expecting to happen. Um, if that's bigger than one, it's actually going to shrink things. If it's less than one, it's going to stretch them out. So that's it. And that applies to any of our functions. Okay, that applies to any of your functions. And that number bigger than one, when it's with the variable, it's the opposite of what you're expecting. And then this last one, D, the number of added or subtracted from the end, that's that vertical shift, up or down. And that happens with our other functions, x squared plus 3. It looks just like x squared, except we move it up 3 units. Um, e to the x minus 4. It looks just like e to the x. We just move it down 4 units. So these translations apply to any function, except this is the only one with the period um, that we're going to talk about. But these translations, this idea applies to any of our functions.